Hi, welcome back. Now as we continue to look on the topic of consumer arithmetic, let's spend some time in discussing a very important subtopic, which is higher purchase, all right? Now this is actually a concept that is familiar with most persons as, you know, if you understand that buying today is worth more than buying tomorrow, then you understand the concept of higher purchase, all right? So for instance, let's suppose that a cell phone cost up front $10,000, let's say, okay? But you don't have the money to buy this cell phone today. Now, what do you do? Well, there are a number of options. I could borrow the money from a friend to buy this cell phone for $10,000 and pay back that person, obviously at an interest as we considered in our previous lesson, or you could enter what is called a higher purchase plan, which requires you to pretty much pay a deposit, okay? So to pay a deposit and settle the balance in a number of what you call installments, all right? So for instance, this plan may have been something where I paid, let's say $2,500 upfront, okay? And I paid for this thing over the next, let's say 10 months, okay? And let's suppose I paid $1,000 over the next 10 months, all right? So we will make 10 payments of $1,000 plus a deposit of $2,500. Now, notice under this scenario, you'd actually end up paying $10,000 plus $2,500, which is in total uh, $12,500. So naturally, if you're taking longer to pay for an item, that you already have in your possession, then you would have to pretty much compensate the seller with more money. And this is exactly the concept of higher purchase. All right. So paying up front, you will pay less, but paying over a number of installments, then you would end up paying more. Now let's take a quick look at our lesson. And you know, we will be doing a number of examples to actually get the concept out. Now the first example we look at, we see here that a watch listed for 35,000 can be bought with a deposit of 20% and a monthly installment of $1,500 for two years, all right? So to buy this watch, okay, which now costs $35,000, we can actually buy this thing on what we call higher purchase, which requires us to pay a deposit of 20%, all right? So let's calculate our deposit, okay? So this is actually 20% of your listed price, and this gives us $7,000, okay? And given that we know our deposit amount, then our total installments, okay? So our total installments must be two years worth of $1,500 payment, all right? Now, two years, given that these are monthly payments, then two years equates to 24 months and if I'm paying $1,500 for 24 months, then in total I would have paid. So this is 1,500 times 24. And so I would have paid 36,000. And therefore my total price, okay? Total price for this item is 7,000 plus 36,000 under this higher purchase plan, all right? So I'm paying in total 43,000 for an item that cost 35,000, all right? So it actually makes sense to purchase upfront, but as you know, you may not have the money to purchase upfront. So the first thing that it asks us is to calculate the higher purchase price, which we did, which is 43,000, okay? And then it asks us for the interest that is paid over two years. Well, this is a bit dubious, all right? So while we're not looking at interest, you can look at the fact that paying over two years have a certain risk for the seller, given that you're getting the watch upfront, the watch could have been damaged and, you know, he gets nothing back. And therefore, there has to be some mechanism inbuilt to ensure that he's getting more money over the period for the risk that the watch that he's selling uh, and he has yet to collect for is actually in good standing, all right? So that can be looked at as interest. The difference in the amount that you pay under the higher purchase scenario and under the paying upfront scenario, all right? So given that I would have paid, let's say this is $8,000 more, okay? So this is 43,000 minus 
35,000, which gives us $8,000. And so I can look at this thing as being the interest that I have paid for this watch. And finally, we are asked to express the interest as a percentage of the cash price. Well, the cash price here is 35,000. And so 8,000 divided by 35,000 gives us, so this is 8,000 divided by 35,000 gives us 0.2285, or so this is actually 0.2286. And if I were to convert this thing to a percentage by multiplying by 100, then I'd actually get 22.86%. Or so this is 22.86%. Now let us look at another example. So here we see that the marked price of a freezer is $3,000, let's say. And there's a discount of 15% for cash payment. So if I were to pay for this freezer up front, then I would have received a discount of 15% of the listed price. And to obtain the freezer on air purchase, a deposit of $595 is required and 18 monthly installments of $159.50. All right. So let's look at the price under both scenario. So if I'm paying the cash price, then I would be paying 15% less, okay? So if I were to work out 15% of $3,000, okay? Then I would end up with $450, let's see, using our calculator. Okay, so this is actually $450. And so my cash price is $3,000 less $450, which gives us $2,550. All right, so the cash price for this item is actually $2,550. So if I paid using cash, then I would certainly pay it less, given that I would have gotten a discount of 15%. Now, what about our I purchase price? All right, so it says here that what is the total amount paid if bought on I purchase? Well, the I purchase price we know is the deposit plus the installments, all right? So our deposit is actually $595, okay? Plus I would be making 18 monthly installments of $159.50. So let's see what this works out to be. So this gives us 595 plus 18 times 159.50, okay? Which is 3,400 and uh, 66 okay so this is our i purchase price and notice here again that this price is actually much more than your cash price all right now the difference between the cash price and the i purchase price as a percentage of the marked price well all this is asking us is to find the difference let's call that d and this would be 3466 okay minus 2000 $550 and this gives us $916, all right? Now, given that this is our difference, to find this as a percentage of our marked price, all we do is to pretty much divide, okay, by our marked price, which is $3,000 and times this by 100% if you want to do it this way, all right? So, uh, this would actually be divided by $3,000, okay? And this gives us 0 0.305, okay? So this is actually 0 0.305 and times 100% will definitely give us 30.5%, all right? So this is 30.5% of your marked price. So this is just a quick bit on calculating I purchase amounts and you will get a number of practice quiz at the end of this section. Now see you in the next lesson where we'll be discussing more consumer arithmetic.